every hand lifted from the front all the way to the back we cry holy come on sing it with your spirit this is not emotionalism this is not fanaticism those that worship will worship with spirit and in truth come on lift up your voice as loud as you can sing holy cry holy we cry the covenant has returned to the city the ark has returned to the city I said if the presence of God goes before us none of our enemies can stand against us greater he that is in me than he that is in the world is there somebody that believes if the presence of God is here then no demon can stand against what he has ordained in this time. This cry holy, oh, it's not because we are good, it's because he is good. The lamb that was slain, his blood, it runs through the streets of New York City tonight, declaring holy prostitutes receiving redemption crying holy drug addicts receiving forgiveness crying holy holy is the lamb worthy is the one that was slain they cry holy hey come on holy cry out yeah there it is there's got to be a desperation there's got to be an agony there has to be a longing there's a hunger there's a hunger The glory of the Lord is settling upon Times Square. 
The King is walking through the streets of Times Square right now. And we cry, holy, let those with eyes see that he is here. Let those with ears hear that he is here. And we cry, holy, the ones that see, cry, holy, the ones that hear, cry holy the ones who have prayed for this moment the ones who have fasted the ones who are longing the ones who have pushed aside the programs the ones who have resisted religion we cry holy 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 Fire fall, fire fall, fire fall. New York City, you've experienced the baptism of John and water, but I come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire! Fire fall, fire fall, fire fall, fire fall. Fire fall. Fire fall! There it is. There comes a moment when you have to provoke heaven. There comes a moment where you have to say, God, turn your eyes to this nation. God is not done with America. We are at a turning point. We are at a turning point. We've reached a tipping point. Over my shoulder is a ball that drops. And once a year when that ball drops, it declares a new year. But I say in the spiritual realm, there is a ball dropping over my shoulder right now that is declaring a new, that is declaring a new day. I call to the end of the seeker-sensitive movement. It is over. We will carry the ark. We will be a person of the presence of Jesus Christ. There's a turning point in this nation. Division is over. It's a new year. Denominationalism is dead. Let the true worshipers arise from the north to the south, to the east, to the west. There's one body, there's one baptism, there's one Jesus, there's one Holy Ghost. Let the church arise. Over my shoulder in the spiritual realm is a ball dropping that's declaring the end of guilt and shame and condemnation. You used to have to have a seminary degree 
And now God is simply looking for a yes. We don't have time. There's an urgency in 2 Peter. When we talk about the return of Christ, I'm not talking about canceling all your plans. I'm talking about the urgency that produces anguish, that on the inside of you, you're disturbed. You're at your job and something is turning in your belly because you look at the faces of your coworkers and you know they're bound for hell because whatever your vocation is, I can assure you, it does not exist in heaven. In heaven, there are sons and daughters and there's got to be a desperation inside of you that's in, that says when we sing the song, spirit break out, we mean break all the way out. Break out of our churches. The biggest church in New York City is too small when there's 20,000 people in your church, but 10 million people in these streets. Spirit break out. Spirit, break. Revival is not a church service. It's you baptizing people in your bathtub because you can't wait for Sunday. It's you doing a deliverance in the back room at work on your lunch break because those demons are so irritated and agitated that they gotta come up and out. Revival is inconvenience. Revival will cost you everything. David said, I will not offer God that which costs me nothing. And at most local churches, you get your favorite beverage in one hand and a bagel in the other, and it costs you $3 in gas to get there. 70 minutes service and you're out. But I see a turning. I see a turning. Right now in the streets of New York City, they can decriminalize marijuana. And people thought they were getting high, but it brought them down low because there's a high cost for low living. Counterfeit comforts in these streets, trying to medicate. See what happens is no matter how high inflation goes in this nation, millennials got college degrees and they cannot afford houses, but they can, they can always afford alcohol. The devil is a liar. It's going to cost you everything to see revival. And David said, I will not offer God that which costs me nothing. Oh, if you're a pastor, I dare you to ask your church for more than tithes and offering. Ask them for 24-7 intercession. Ask them for evangelism in the streets. Ask them to get down and dirty. If they need a seminary degree, fire up your printer and start printing degrees because God takes the unqualified and qualifies them by the blood of Jesus because he uses the foolish people to confound the wise, because he takes the have-nots and raises them up and gives them a voice. Somebody shout if you say yes! New York, shout if you say yes! Politicians can't solve it. Can I submit to you that that's good news in disguise? Because the end of their strategy is the beginning of the supernatural. Uh, uh, when you hear the sound of an, of an impending famine, know that God is getting ready to debut a Joseph.
who had been going through a process and God said, I'm about to debut him. When you hear the taunts of Goliath, can I just tell you our educational system cannot solve it. Indoctrinating our children. Can I just tell you every demon under the sound of my voice right now, you cannot have our children. You may run in our family, but we are where you run. Are there any generational bloodline curse breakers in Times Square right now? Come on, Jenny. Come on, Julie. I need some help because we're about to do a mass deliverance right here in Times Square. Are there any chain breakers? Listen, well, here's what we're about to do. We talked about the spirit of religion. Let's evict the spirit of religion. We talked about the spirit of addiction. Let's evict the spirit of addiction. Now listen, some of you go to churches that act like demons don't exist. Let me just tell you, New York City said we have a rat problem, so they got a rat czar. No, no, New York City has a demon problem, so can I just introduce myself as the demon czar tonight? We're about to slay the enemy tonight. There's some chronic illness under the sound of my voice that's about to be healed right now. There's some cancer cells that are gonna begin to die right now. Oh no, this isn't the Jeremiah Johnson show. This isn't the Jenny Weaver show. This isn't the Greg Locke show. But if Christ be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus and let every other demon lay low in the presence of Jehovah. Yeshua HaMashiach, my Savior, Messiah. Is there anybody here that belongs to the tribe of Judah? Is there anybody who got grafted in? Is there anybody? Come on, let's roar like our Father over the, come on. So here's what we're about to do. All over this place, we're about to receive deliverance. Some of you are here for an impartation of fire. Some of you are here to return back to your first love. Listen, if you play it safe in warfare, you die. Do you hear what I just said? If you play it safe in warfare, you die. See, there are peacetime generals and there are wartime generals. See, the peacetime generals they have nice outfits with creases and smell like cologne, but they're paper pushers in an office. But wartime generals, they might not look, look cute. They might not have it all together, but wartime generals have their spiritual sword dipped in blood and they know how to go out to war. This is a call to arms in the spiritual realm. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We take captive every thought that erects itself up against the word of God and we pull it down. Somebody shout. Come on, Jenny, help me chain break. Devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. The chain break is in the room. And there's no telling what he's gonna do. I said, I said, I said, the devil. Oh, I don't hear y'all. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I said the devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Say, chain breakers in the room. And there's no telling what he's going to do. I said, I said, I said, devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice. There's no telling, there's no telling what he's gonna do. I 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I got a message for somebody. And I want you to hear me loud and clear right now. They didn't start you, so they can't stop you. I feel so much confusion coming against you right now. But I want to remind you that he who began a good work in you will see it through till completion. Let me just tell you, we're about to leave this place in a few moments. But I feel a commissioning happening because for far too long, we have been maintaining, but we were not destined to maintain. We were destined to take territory. Listen, for far too long, we have killed our destiny in the comments section of social media. Let me just tell you, a moving train does not stop for barking dog. So Julie, I need your help with this real quick. I need your help because here's what we're about to do. We're going back to our homes and we are gonna go back to the enemy's camp and take back what was stolen from us. Lift your hands if you're ready to be commissioned. Lift your hands if you're ready to say yes. Lift your hands if you're ready to go take territory. We are not, I said we are not maintaining anymore. We are not maintaining. We are taking territory. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it. right now as we prepare to end tonight many of you are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says after the Holy Spirit comes upon you you will receive power to be my witnesses on the count of three all over Times Square I want you to begin to speak in tongues as you receive the gift of tongues you are going to receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit you're going to receive gifts of the Spirit prophecy, healing, discerning of spirits. There's going to be a supernatural impartation to do the will of the Lord. One, two, three, now. 
Come on. Holy Spirit, baptize them now. Speak it out boldly. Speak it out boldly, unapologetically. We are not ashamed of the gift giver. We are not ashamed of the gift giver. Hey, Pentecost, Pentecost has come. Hey, Rayonomondrie, speak it out. Speak it out. We are not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. It's a new day. It's a new day. Hey, come on. As you hear the sound of that shofar, I want to commission you. Let's take this Holy Spirit baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit into the streets of New York City. I dare you. In the book of Acts, it said they added to their numbers daily. I dare you to go into the neighborhoods and the blocks of New York City right now and to leave with this fresh fire. And let's go into the boroughs on our way home and leave with this fresh fire. How many of you are believing that you're family will be saved before 2024. I said before 2024. As we disperse from this place, let me just tell you, your feet are girded with the shoes to speed the gospel. Come on, is there anybody swinging the sword of the spirit? Is there anybody with a shield of faith? Is there anybody who's ready to go out there and do the will of the Father? Is there anybody who says, I don't need another worship service. I don't need another sermon. I just need another person to set free and break chains from. I just need somebody who will listen. Are you ready? Come on. Heavenly Father, I pray right now over each and every one of them, that as we disperse from this place, as we go out, Lord, that there is no Target, Walmart, there is no bodega that's safe because where we are, the spirit of the living God is with us. Father, as we go back to our schools, I thank you that revival is about to break out in schools. I thank you, Father, that Jesus clubs are gonna be formed in schools. Father, I thank, oh, come on, somebody. Lord, I thank you that you're bringing a fresh wind and fire to churches and a rising tide lifts all ships. And Father, I thank you that from every generation, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest, that you're pouring out your spirit on all flesh, Father. And we thank you for November 13th when we go back to theaters across America and that every single movie theater turns into a tabernacle in the wilderness and suicides will be canceled. 
and depression and anxiety will be broken and addictions will be broken. And Father, I thank you that the latter is greater than the former. And we thank you, God, for stepping into the glory days. Somebody shout. Come on. Let's go do what Jesus told us to do. Love you guys.